Okay, I'm gonna to try to give a tour of my gearbox cooling and filtering system. I have a uh, 2.5 liter Subaru engine here. And of course, uh, that's a Synchro 094 gearbox. And the engine's something like 170 horsepower and the gearbox was designed for about 90. And then Volkswagen discontinued it, you know, and so, Anyway, it's a little bit undersized. So it's my opinion that at about 150 horsepower, you should think about uh, cooling your gearbox, especially if it is getting to be more than 160 degrees, and certainly before it gets to 180 degrees, because there's a bearing up here in the uh, gear carrier housing that gets loose in its bore at 180 degrees, and, and that's a bad thing. The uh, Volkswagen gearbox is built like a wedding cake. It's uh, these, these round sections that stack on top of each other. And uh, when it gets too hot, the, the, the bearing bores get bigger and they let the bearings loose. And that's not good. So anyway, if you have a, a water boxer or, you know, maybe less than 120 horsepower, I wouldn't worry about it. But somewhere around 120, you think about it, and then around 150, I think it gets to be more important. Okay, so here's the uh, pump right here. It's a Weddell pump. It pumps two gallons per minute, and going through the system, it seems to generate about 20 PSI oil pressure, mostly caused by the back pressure from the filtration system. Anyway, so just the tour of where it goes here. Here's what I have on this one. This is the uh, a T where the oil comes out of the gearbox, the suction out of the gearbox. And right there is a big magnet on it. So all of the oil comes out of the gearbox. Through this annular space around the magnet and then it you know, a, a neodymium, really strong magnet. And then it goes out this tube. So this is the suction. And then uh, you can see coming up here and it, it does this loop up there and around, you know, just the hose wouldn't kink. And has the inlet of the pump, of the Weddell pump of this hose here. And you can see it goes up to this uh, magnetic uh, oil filter. And, and th this example, this is a bit extreme. I'm just doing some testing. So I have this huge magnetic filter with a visible bowl and everything because I just want to observe this one gearbox. Because uh, this gearbox sat uh, for 31 years and unused and I want to make sure it didn't have any rust coming through or chunks of uh you know gears coming apart because they're rusty and i still don't know that but i don't see any problems but anyway it comes out of that uh, magnetic filter and you know this way and then into this eight micron filter and this is this is a fuel filter you know we're, we're pumping 90 weight gear oil through a fuel filter eight microns that's pretty small. Five microns is about the smallest you can ever filter with a media. It's very expensive to filter more than five microns. So this is really like the best you'll ever get, okay? But gears and bearings like for longest life or overload situations, they like less than one micron of filtration or, or cleanliness. And so, as you can see, we'll never get there. Okay, but eight, eight microns is pretty small. So anyway, it comes out of this eight micron filter and, and, and comes this way here, and then it goes up, and, and this is a um, radiator hose. So it goes up that way into the engine compartment, and I'll move up there. Okay, here we are in the engine compartment, and um, Here's where the oil comes up here from that filter and into this cooler where it goes, you know, back and forth 
across through here and out. And this cooler is, is about six inches by six inches, and it has a fan, and uh, it's plenty big to cool a Vanagon gearbox. The oil goes on out. You can see it going down that way. And here's the oil coming from the cooler into this fitting right here, right behind the shifter. That's the shifter mechanism, but, and it goes into the um, oil filler hole. So right back into the gearbox there. And on this gearbox, uh, that fitting that it goes into has a nozzle on it and the nozzle uh, squirts the oil in a very specific location uh, on fourth gear, near the fourth gear mesh where it also um, gets into the uh, a little passageway to lubricate the main shaft bearing on you know on the main shaft of the gearbox. Okay, I'm going to show you some aspects of this gearbox that are um, th the reason we want to cool it. And you got to understand, I'm not a gearbox builder. I'm just an interested guy. I mean, I'm an engineer but I'm, I'm not an experienced builder. I've never built a gearbox. You guys want real advice? You ask uh, Mr. Gas, Matt Seidel, Mike Herbert, and you know, there's GTA and Ken Porter. Oh, there's a whole bunch of experienced guys out there, but I just focus on these specific things here uh, with regards to overloading this little gearbox with our big engines. Okay, so that's that. So you see this here, this is the main shaft bearing here. And uh, it, it goes in the gear carrier there. And this one here has this wear on the thrust surface, right there where fourth gear uh, rubs on it or, or uh, like a little orbital sander sort of sands at it. But anyway, um, it, it's kind of a concern. The main shaft bearing goes in the hole right there in that bore. And you know, I can I put this in here and okay, watch I'm putting in pushing it in by hand, okay. All right, now, now that's a thermal fit. You have to heat the gearbox to 180 degrees and cool the bearing, and, and they go together, and then when it cools down, there's a thermal fit holding that uh, uh bearing in the housing. Anyway, but you can see this old gearbox is so loose that I was able to push that in by hand, okay? So some of you guys with old gearboxes out there, even at room temperature, your bearing is loose, okay? And that's not good because the main shaft sits in there and it can slide back and forth and then uh, it rubs on here. You can see where the, the gear was touching the case making that circle around there. Anyway, you don't want to overheat this gearbox. It, it, it can't take heat it, like a normal gearbox can. Normal gearbox, 220 degrees is no big deal. On our gearboxes, 180 degrees is a problem. On a brand new gearbox, and almost any heat is a problem on an old gearbox. Okay, so that's that. So here's the uh, fourth gear pair. And uh, this one goes in here right on the main shaft bearing. And then this one here is on the pinion shaft. So the power comes in here, goes across the gear and goes out this way to your ring and pinion. All right. So what, what we do with this uh, return nozzle, I mean, you can just pump the cold, cold oil back into here and that's fine. But with this nozzle here, you put that in there. And if you can see it's, Hard to see but it's it goes up just a little bit well it's going in there and it it points at this little cast in relief here where the oil packs in there it, it packs in there the gears are turning this way and this way so so they're meshing there and they're packing the oil into this little relief here oil goes up and it gets into the main bearing and that's good. And then also the cool oil keeps this bore cooled and, and thus clamped on the main shaft bearing. And it keeps that main shaft bearing from sliding around in this bore. Okay, so that's how it is. That's how it looks. 
on on the trans you know on on this gearbox on this system that I just showed you Okay, so what I'm using to control the pump on this is this little electronic uh, controller that I get uh, off the internet. They're all over the internet. It's called Inkbird is the brand, and it's the ITC1000, I believe. It's 12 volts uh, controller. And they're real easy to program, and they work real well. I've been using it for seven years. Works, just runs like a top, no problems. Very, and it also, um, you know, provides your temperature gauge too. You know, it's like easy to read. You can tell when it's running. It has a little indicators. You see that little, uh, that little heat thing. Well, when the pump turns on, there's a little LED just like that by the cool, and it means it's cooling. So when the little LED dot is on right there, that means it's pumping. Okay, here we are underneath the gearbox again, and this is on the um, left side of the vehicle, and here's the sensor for that ink bird. And it's just, you know, this wire, it just goes on up there. It You can extend it, and it seems to be really accurate, and I like them. That uh, ink bird controller has 10 amp relays in it, so it's probably big enough, but just to make sure I use that 10 amp relay of the ink bird to control this, uh, I believe it's a 30 amp relay. And this here is what runs the pump through this wire here. And this little blue wire is what runs uh, the fan here. And currently I, I have a switch on the fan because I, I turn the fan off because just the airflow that comes down, you know, from out here and, and through here has been enough to cool this gearbox, and except in the middle of summer, you know, when it's 100 degrees, then I have to turn the fan on. But someday I will use some system to get rid of this switch and turn the fan on you know, when it's about 150 degrees or something.